著名理论物理学家 l e n n a r s u s t a n 中文译名里奥纳特·瑟斯金，台湾里奥纳特·苏士坎，香港莱昂纳特·萨斯坎德，大陆美国史丹佛大学教授，美国国家科学院院士，美国艺术与科学学院院士。他对当代理论物理做出不少重要贡献，未显理论的创始人之一，创造全向理论、黑洞互补原理。指出黑洞不会消灭资讯，霍金后来也同意他的看法。这个在史丹佛大学的关于量子物理学中纠缠的讲座，被誉为史上最好的量子纠缠讲课。为此，我们特作推荐介绍。这个讲课精简地介绍了量子力学，重点介绍了纠缠的概念及其在理论和实际模拟中的意义。讲课首先讨论了爱因斯坦和波尔之间有关量子力学的著名争论。讲课强调了爱因斯坦的深刻见解，特别是关于纠缠概念的深刻见解，并表明波尔可能没有完全掌握其含义。Einstein and Bohr had a famous debate that lasted at least twenty years. It was a debate over quantum mechanics. I suspect most of you, if you haven't read the debate, at least are very, very aware of it. The debate reached its climax with the idea of entanglement. It's generally deemed that Bohr won the debate, but in retrospect, it's clear to me that Einstein's view was by far the deeper. Bohr, I think, never really understood entanglement. In essence, he told Einstein, "Go home and take an aspirin. You'll feel better in the morning." Einstein didn't want to feel better. He wanted to understand it. 讲课，然后介绍了爱因斯坦关于量子力学的论文。一九三五年，爱因斯坦发表了两篇关于量子力学不同主题的重要论文，但最初被驳回。两篇论文为 E.P.R. Einstein Rosen Podolsky 和 E.R. Einstein Rosen 分别对量子纠缠和黑洞予以了研究。In 1935, at long after, incidentally, he was considered to be irrelevant. Einstein wrote two papers on two entirely different subjects. At the time, they were widely dismissed. The two papers will be known. Can this be seen? EPR. ER stands for Einstein and Rosen. He wrote the paper with Nathan Rosen. I will tell you what it was all about as we go along. And EPR stands for Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen. As I said, these two papers were on entirely different subjects. As far as I know, neither Einstein nor anybody else had any reason to believe they were connected. In classical physics, you can know the exact state of a system. Not sorry, you can always know the exact state of a system. Knowing the exact state of a system in classical physics entails knowing exactly what's going on with each of its parts. But in principle, without disturbing the system significantly, we could have known more about it than we did. All right, let's begin with EPR. EPR, Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen. It also happens to stand for a term that they used in their paper, "elements of physical reality." This was something that disturbed Einstein a lot. 讲课，然后透过单自旋的量子力学理论。使用自旋系统的范例提供了有关量子力学的快速讲解，解释了自旋分量的测量以及获得正义或负义结果的量子力学本质，强调了测量设备不同方向的结果的随机性。But let me give you a very very quick quantum mechanics lesson. Here it goes. We have a spin. A spin is a little physical system. For the moment, let's not even worry about what it's attached to. In practice, it would be attached to an electron, but it's a little system, and it has an arrow associated with it. In other words, a vector. It's something you can measure, and when you measure it, you measure its components: its x component, its y component, and its z component, and so forth. So let's add another system. The next system is the apparatus that we use to measure it, and the apparatus looks like this. It's a box. It's a black box. Well, it's not black. It's the, it's just a box. It has a little screen on it that、uh, will show an answer. It has an arrow on it that says this way up in order to tell which way it's oriented. 
And you can orient it in any direction in three-dimensional space that you want. It also has a button here. The button says M for measure. Right? You bring the apparatus up to the spin so that it's in contact with it. You press the button, and you get an answer. Purportedly, the answer is supposed to be the component of the spin along the axis of the detector. You will always get, in quantum mechanics, either plus or minus one. No intermediate answer, nothing in between, either plus or minus one. This is a little bit peculiar, that the component of a vector in an arbitrary direction should be plus or minus one, but we understand this. This is, this is quantum mechanics. This is the weirdness of quantum mechanics, but it's OK. Uh, we did our homework, and that's a consistent thing to happen. Now, it is also true that for any state of the spin, in other words, for any precise way that you set up the spin, any state, which means any specification, complete specification of everything that you can know about the spin, everything that you can know, that there is always a direction. It's called a polarization direction, that if you oriented the apparatus in that particular direction, you would always get plus one. In other words, there's some direction that we would say the spin is pointing along, that if you measure it along that direction, you'll always get plus one. By contrast, if you orient the apparatus in another direction, you'll get statistically somewhat random results. The more orthogonal the detector is to the polarization axis, the more random it is. And in particular, if the little, this arrow here lies in the plane perpendicular to the polarization of the spin, you simply get random answers. Okay? That's quantum mechanics of a single spin in a nutshell. 讲课然后讨论了用经典计算机模拟量子力学的可能性。讲课解释说,对于单次自选,这涉及一个随机数产生器和一个记录自选状态的记忆体。然而,模拟纠缠自选需要更复杂的设置。包括中央处理器,双自旋系统的记忆体,以及连接系统,以复制量子纠缠的线。Now, next question. Can you simulate, can you fool somebody into thinking they're seeing quantum mechanics? Here's, here's, the, here's your task. You have a computer. Here's your computer. On your computer screen, you have a detector, an apparatus. That apparatus can be manipulated, and it can be oriented in any direction. You have a little M over here, and you take your mouse, and you click on that M, and in the box here, or not in the box, in a little circle there, appears a plus or minus one. Okay. The question is, can you program your computer in such a way as to fool somebody into thinking that in the computer there is a real electron, and this is measuring the real electron and recording the result. Okay. Yes, it's not very hard. You need two things, well, at least two things. Computer scientists might figure out some more stuff that you actually need. But one thing you need is a random number generator, because you have to, under certain circumstances, you have to generate random answers. So you need a random number generator, and you need a memory to record the state of the spin. Whatever the state of the spin means, in this case it simply means a polarization direction, you need to record what the state of the spin is, and you need, to, uh, and you need a random number generator to generate answers. That's all you need, and you can mimic quantum mechanics, at least for the single spin. Now let's come to the problem, let's suppose there are two spins. Let's suppose there are two spins, and let's presume that the spins are fairly far apart, so that they're not significantly interacting. They're separate. Here's another spin. And here's the detector or the apparatus that's used for measuring that spin. You might expect that the state of a two-spin system is simply specified by specifying two polarization vectors. 
two polarization vectors, and that they're simply two systems identical, each identical to the first. And in fact, you can create electrons or spins in that kind of configuration. You just do it by uh, separately and independently arranging the two states of the two spins. It's called a product state. In a product state, there's not much crosstalk, no crosstalk between them, no correlation between them, not even any interaction between them. And the two um, sets of experiments are completely independent. Each apparatus has its own random number. Well, this is for the real spins. Question is, can you simulate this? Of course you can simulate this. To simulate it, you simply have two random number generators, two memories, one over here, one over here, and you just do in each place the same thing that you would have done with only one spin. So yes, you can simulate that. But there are a wider class of states available to two spins, and the additional states are called entangled states. 讲课，然后深入介绍了量子纠缠的本质和含义，其中纠缠粒子的测量是相关的，尽管它们各自的状态是不确定的。这个现象可以用两个自旋纠缠的例子来说明：如果一个自旋测量为正一，另一个自旋将为负一，无论测量方向为何。Um, for those who know quantum mechanics, I will write down an example of entangled states, and I will never use it again. But I will not explain it. I will just write it. One over the square root of two times a state in which the first spin is up, the second one is down, minus the first one down, the second one up. This is a quantum mechanical combination of two states in which one of the states has one spin up and the other one down, and the other and vice versa, and vice versa. This is a proper Quantum mechanical state. It is a complete description of the system. There is no more to know. You cannot know any more. Quantum mechanics says there cannot be any more knowledge once you know the state of the system. But it has some odd properties. Let me tell you what the odd, well, the, the odd property that I find most interesting. Of course, there are very compl-、uh, there are detailed mathematical consequences of this. But I'm just going to focus on one. Very, very simple observation. If in this type of state you measure either of the two spins in any direction at all, you'll get a random answer. It doesn't matter which way you tilt your apparatus; you'll always get a random answer. In other words, in this case, there is no polarization vector for either of the spins, and it simply doesn't look like a state of two independent spins. Either spin or both spins. If you measure them, you will get random answers. I would say this is peculiar for the following reason. I would say that you have absolute, complete information about the composite system of two spins, and you have absolutely no information about either of the parts of the system. Now that's weird if you think about it. If you think about it. I'm telling you that you have a complete description of the composite system, and yet no knowledge of either of the parts. That's a feature of maximally entangled states. The entanglement has a degree of、uh, entanglement associated with it. We don't need to get into the mathematics of it. There can be unentangled states. There can be a little bit entangled states, and there can be very entangled states. I'm interested in the very entangled states now. Okay, so. The question then is:、um, if everything is random, what does this thing, this state, tell you? What it tells you about is not what happens if you make one measurement or the other one, but it tells you about correlations between the two. In this state, the following is true: pick any direction at all, line up the two detectors or the two apparatuses in the same direction. And measure both spins. In this state here, you will always, although it's random, what、uh, whether you get a plus or minus one. If one of them gives a plus one, the other one will always give a minus one. In other words, although the polarizations are completely undefined for the individual spins, nevertheless, 
they are found every single time to be in the opposite direction. The entanglement tells you about correlations between them, and tells you about relations between them, but it tells you nothing about the individuals. That, should, that shook Einstein. That bothered him. He said, what's real? Is the, is, what is real about these two spins? And he came to the conclusion that the description here didn't say anything about either one of them, and that bothered him. Somehow Bohr just was uh, okay with it. I don't even know if Bohr understood it. Um, if you read the dialogue between them, you'll come to the conclusion that Bohr was mumbling in his beard. Anyway, can you simulate this system? It's kind of interesting. You can simulate it all right. You can simulate it on a computer or a couple of computers, um, the situation of the entangle. If they're not entangled, if they're in a product state, it's easy. You just make two replicas of the detector and everything else. If they are entangled like this, in order to simulate, you have to do the following. You first of all have to have a kind of central processor which is going to do the computing. So it sits in the middle there somewhere. It has to have the usual random number generator. Random number generator. It has to have the usual random number generator, the usual memory, but now it's memory, memorizing, not memorizing, it's remembering the state of the two spin system not just one spin at a time. It's remembering that state. And the random number generator and associated pieces have to be connected by wires to the two distant computers. 讲座接着描述纠缠是一种常见现象, 即使系统各部分之间的最小交互作用，也可能导致纠缠，从而导致系统一个部分的测量可以预测另一部分的结果的情况。尽管各个测量具有随机性。We now remember we're now simulating it. This isn't real. There's no real electron there. There's no real electron here. We're trying to fake it. In order to fake it, there have to be wires there. On one side, let's call this Alice's side. We'll use the usual Alice and Bob. On Alice's side, Alice is going to make a decision about what direction to measure the spin in. The instant that Alice decides to measure that spin, or the instant that she starts to measure that spin, a message has to go to tell the random number generator in the system over here what direction Alice decided to make the measurement in, what direction the... Um, her apparatus was in. Once that happens, some things happen here, and then it sends back a message with a random plus or minus one, not a completely random plus or minus one, but a plus or minus one that is the, supposed to be the answer. Same for Bob. And Bob has to be connected to the same random number generator because of the strange entanglement or the strange correlation between them. So, in order to mimic in order to mimic the quantum behavior of two distant entangled systems, you have to fake it with a collection of wires that connect them, basically. What would happen if you cut the wires and tried to deal with it by two separate systems? You couldn't do it. This is the sense in which entanglement is non-local. It's non-local in the sense that if you try to simulate it with a classical computer, if you try to simulate quantum mechanics with a classical computer, you have to fill space with wires. Those wires uh, would really have to genuinely be there. And more than that, the wires have to be able to transmit information essentially instantaneously to do this. That sense in which quantum mechanics is... Now you may ask, with all these wires around, can you transmit information faster than the speed of light? Can you transmit from Alice to Bob a piece of information about anything you like? Well, sure you can if you have those wires there. Those wires are like uh, telephone wires and they're instantaneous, so of course you can. So this might seem to violate Einstein's principle that you can't send information faster than the speed of light. But in fact, if you restrict yourself to only those operations, which makes sense for quantum mechanics. The thing that a quantum mechanics experiment would actually allow you to do, 
under no circumstances will you send anything faster than the speed of light. So it's a little bit strange, but the strangeness has to do with simulating quantum mechanics on a classical computer. That's what entanglement is about. I'm sort of taking you through a tour of various, uh, various interesting things about entanglement. Now, the next thing is, is entanglement a rare phenomena? Is it something that you have to work very, very hard to arrange between systems? The answer is no. Entanglement is extremely generic. In fact, it tends to spread out among systems like, a, uh, like a, uh, an infectious, a very badly infectious disease. Uh, if you have a system which is composed now of a lot of parts. Let's imagine we have a system that's composed of a lot of these spins. Here it is. It's a box of spins with lots of them. Let's start them all in some particular state, which is a product state, and let's say in which they're all polarized along the z-axis. I want to put some more in. I want to have an even number. OK. We start that way. That is not an entangled state. Each one of these things is in its own private state. They are not entangled. You gain no information about another one by measuring one of them. And that's not entangled. OK. Now you let them interact with each other. You let them just interact, maybe even just a little bit, some kind of forces between them, maybe uh, some interactions which tend to uh, rearrange them a little bit. And let those interactions persist for a relatively short time, just a fraction of a second. In a very short time, this system will become maximally or very close to maximally entangled. What does that mean? That means if you divide the system in half, in any way, in fact, it doesn't matter vertically divide it in half, diagonally divide it in half, just pick out half the spins and pick out another half the spins, here's what will be true. The state will give you no information about either half. Everything that you measure about either half will be completely random. But if you want to know the result of any experiment, let's call this Alice's share, let's call this Bob's share, Bob can predict the result of any measurement that Alice will do by doing an appropriate experiment of his own which will then, and it's exactly the same thing as over here, these two entangled spins, if you want to know what one of them is doing, just look at the other one, and the first one will be anti-parallel with it, if you were to measure it. If you measure both of them, they will be anti-parallel. The same kind of thing is true here. And what's more, it doesn't even matter how you divide it. Any way that you divide it, you'll be able to predict the other half by measuring one half. That means that entanglement is very pervasive. Things get, tend to get massively entangled very quickly. You, you, I assure you, you are entangled with your neighbor. In fact, you're entangled with me. I don't know how that feels to you, but... Uh, uh, and in fact, you're entangled with the Martians on Mars. 最后,讲座介绍空间区域的纠缠。纠缠的概念从粒子扩展到空间区域给出了一个例子其中两个空间区域可以纠缠使得一个区域中粒子的存在或不存在与另一个区域中的相同粒子相关 okay. Let me give you another example of entanglement In this case it's not entanglement of spins It's entanglement of regions of space it also makes sense to talk about entanglements of regions of space. So here's two regions of space. And let's say the question that we can ask about these two regions of space is, is there a particle in there or not? Is there a particle in here? Is there a particle in here? OK. One possible state of the system is what you would call a product state. In a product state, there may be a probability distribution for one particle or zero particles, but they're completely independent. A product state, no correlation between them, prepared completely independently, that's called a product state. But you can imagine a state, a quantum state, with the following property, that if there's a particle in here, let's call, it, let's call that one, one particle on the left side, 
then there will definitely be one particle on the right side. But if there is no particle on the left side, then there is no particle on the right side. That would be a quantum state which is entangled, the entanglement not now being between particles, but between regions of space. 您能从这个重要讲座中学到什么吗？请在下面评论区发表您的感想。感谢您的观看与支持，下次再见。